please stand. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. and to comfort and there are many persons that need your presence with them at this time as they grieve the loss of a loved one and so we invite you to be with us throughout this celebration and strengthen us and give us faith and give us hope take full control may your will be done and may your name be honored and exalted for Christ's sake. Amen. Please remain standing as we sing the hymn, Blessed Assurance.
welcome each and every one to this afternoon's service of celebration. And even as we begin, we make excuse for the Honorable Colin E. Jordan, who is our first elder here, minister in the Baptist government, minister responsible for labor and national insurance. He sends his regards and regrets his inability to attend. You know, February is the month that we have come to associate with and to celebrate the achievements of persons of African descent. It is commonly called Black History Month and focuses on the heritage of African peoples. Such celebrations offer the opportunity to appreciate those who have laid the foundation for the society in which we live and which we enjoy. It is with this in mind then that we've come today in February to give thanks to God for the life of one whose family history in the Mile and Quarter Church stretches back almost 100 years to the very beginning of the church. In fact, when the first group of members of our church met for worship back in 1927, they did so in quarters provided by one James Ben at Alton Alley in Wellington Quarter. History shows that James Bain owned a building there and lived in part of it while providing space for a tailor shop and a carpentry workshop. The same space was made available to the church members for worship on Sabbath. And so from the very beginning, James and his family were involved. James Bain was the father of Helena Beatrice Bain whom many of us know as Adelaide McLean, and thus the grandfather of Grantley McLean, for whom we have gathered to give God thanks. The McLean and Skeet families, children and grandchildren included, have remained strong and supportive as DA families throughout the years. They have contributed to the church in Barbados and elsewhere, and have served both at the layperson's level and at the pastoral level. In his time, Grantley touched the lives of many in the church and community, and we are grateful for his positive influence. He was raised by Christian parents and learned lessons that were to remain with him throughout his life. We, he knew that he was upheld by the power of God, and thus he was able to, bore, to bear sorry, his challenges quietly and calmly, confidently, confident of God's ability to sustain him. And so we want to thank all who have come to share these moments of reflection with the family and to offer your support. The leadership and members of the church share with the immediate and extended family in this period of grief and offer our sincere condolences. Let us remember that in times like these, that we become keenly aware of our need for comfort and assurance. It is by holding on to God that we are able to put one foot ahead of the other and continue this journey of faith. We trust that the service will be of great benefit to all of us as we consider our own frail humanity. We welcome everyone and pray that the blessing of God will be experienced by all as we worship. Welcome and be blessed. We invite MacDonald Skeet to give us our first scripture reading. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, I do appreciate your presence here this afternoon. Our scripture reading is taken from 1 Thessalonians chapter 3, verses 13 to 17. 1 Thessalonians chapter 3, verses 13 to 17. But I will not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that ye sorrow not, as even as others which have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, 
Even so, them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall defend, descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we, then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the ear, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. May you be blessed by the reading of God's word. We will now have ministry and music, Midnight Cry, by Brother Jason Mears. the church. I hear the sound of a mighty Russian wind and is closer now than it's ever been. I can almost hear the trumpet as Gabriel sounds the call cause at the midnight cry will be going home I look all around me can see the prophecies fulfilling everywhere the signs of these old times they're appearing everywhere I can no more hear the Father She says, and go get my children, go get my children, cause at the midnight cry, the dead in Christ will rise when Jesus steps out on the cloud to hold his children the dead in Christ will rise oh to meet him in the air and then those that remain the prophecies fulfilling everywhere the signs 
signs of these old times They're appearing everywhere I can no more hear the Father As he sits and go get my children, go get my children Calls at the midnight cry The bride of Christ will rise When Jesus steps out On a cloud to call his children Oh, the dead in Christ will rise Oh, to meet Him in the air And then those that remain Oh, shall be with me The midnight cry Oh, cause at the midnight cry Oh, cause at the midnight cry When a Jesus steps Children, oh, the dead Christ will rise oh, to meet him in the air. And then those that remain, oh, shall be quickly changed. At the midnight cry, oh, cause at the midnight cry, oh, cause at the midnight cry, we'll be going home. certainly await the midnight cry. Thank you, Brother Mears. We'll have two tributes at this time. The first one was written by Sylvia Stewart and will be read to us by Sandra and Alvin Waldron. And immediately after that, we'll have a second tribute by Adele McLean. is a memory of Franklin McLean. Written by his sister, Maria Stewart. It's a stalker, a fearsome turret. It lies in wait. It pounces, it defeats. 
and rain for now, but not for long. We speak of deep sleep, of death, tears of sadness and of grief, mixed, mixed with, with feelings, feelings of, of loss, love from those are from that those in distress. Tears are shed, shed in, in secret, secret or for all to see. Husband, father, brother, friend, we, we, see, you all. Who, we see you now. We miss, miss you. you. You will never know. You left us quickly. quickly. No, not, not a goodbye. Because it's time to live and, and a to time go. to die. You probably would have said, don't cry for me. It's useless. Only, Only silence, silence was heard. Not a word. You will be planted in a garden where the sun will shine and the rain will fall tall. But you will not grow even to the highest, even to the height you used to be tall. And there, another time, another another time, time you, you will, will escape, escape the bounds of death to, to a, a place of, of perfect, perfect rest. rest, eternal rest. Until okay. then, there is a blessed hope. Rest, my, my father, father. Rest, rest in peace. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, I'm a niece. I think I'm like the seventh niece. Anyway. Here's my tribute. I want to thank you all for coming and sharing with us in this celebration of the life of my uncle. He was my mother's only brother. I had, I, growing up with Bradley, I, I heard him talk very little. But when he did speak, he expected you to listen and to do what you have to do. If he said do something, you do the opposite to what he say. Remember, you're getting a pinch. And I, I got a lot of pinches from him. Not, not a shame. He was teaching me to swim. He said do one thing, I did something else. That was a pinch. He came to my mom's house and he asked me to do something and I was like, I don't know how to do it. That was a pinch. But I know he loved me, so I don't worry about that much. Anyway, I saw him a week before his passing. We had a brief exchange and I, the last words I remember saying to him is, get home safe. I didn't know that was going to be the last time that I would speak to him. Okay. My youngest sister, Claire, who couldn't be here today, gently remembers Grantley when he was a conductor and she was going to LSC school. And she was grateful to see him when she got on the bus because he looked out for her. And guess what? She didn't have to pay that bus fare. Mm -hmm. And, you know, she remembered those things. Every one of us has a memory of Grantly in some form or fashion. Standing next to me is another cousin, another niece. And, you know, it was, it's hard. My mom couldn't be here, and she's hurting, and she sends her regards, and she asked me to let you all know she sent her regards, and she wants to thank you all for coming out and supporting.
Pastor Charles Skeet will give us the eulogy. Somehow I volunteered to undertake this task. Eulogy. It's a compound word made up of the prefix eu, which is good, and the word logos in the Greek suggesting words, good words. How do you stand and speak about a man who said very little, was often quiet, Perhaps, if I were a social scientist, I would begin at the quantitative data, that is, the numbers. He was born on October 6, 1943, in the midst of a world war. He had seven children. Six of us are here today, and uh, Kurt is deceased, and so I'm here Matt is here, Sandra, they are my older siblings, and then I came, and I thought that at that point they would have um, stopped, but they kept going. And so came Glenis, my favorite younger sister, and followed by uh, Pernell and Ryan. Ryan and Pernell. This is what happens when I realized when I was the write this eulogy that I've spent more time away from the family than with the family. But nonetheless, I'm delighted today that his sister Sylvia is here. I only know her as Rita Stewart. Don't know how y'all give her the name, Sylvia. And uh, that uh, Auntie Evadne could not be here, but I am grateful that they are able to watch online. So I want to give a shout out uh, to Keith, Adrian, Heather, uh, Jackie, Nigel, Lois, uh, Clear in New Jersey, I see you. And uh, Tora is here in the house. And Oren and the lovely, ever beautiful Grace uh, and, and company. We don't have enough time to get into all the grandchildren. But my father was an interesting gentleman. And so as a social scientist, we move from the numbers because we know that he died at the age of 80 on the 23rd of January, 2024. But as a social scientist, I'm particularly interested in the qualitative data. How do we describe not what happened between 1943 in terms of day of time, but quality of time? And so I've used the approach by Luke in the gospel to collect some eyewitnesses account to gather this. And it begins very early in the journey because one source suggests that when mam Mama, that's how I know my grandmother, don't know any other name for her but Mama. When Mama was pregnant, apparently she orchestrated a sleepover for the children. When they came back, they learned that the stork had brought a baby that turned out to be Grant Lee. As I think about my father, there are some things that quickly jump into mind. He was a tailor. And for many years until I was writing this eulogy, I couldn't figure out where I got my sense of fashion from. Because I never went to study anywhere. Lo and behold, it must have been the tailoring gene that was passed on. Then, my father was also a baker. If you never had his sweet bread, you would think that purity or zenith had the best formula for making coconut bread. Not until you meet Grant Lee's bread. And so I'm delighted that Jesus is the bread of life but also that my greatest challenge towards my goal is flour, 
whether it is knead, bake, fried, or even half cooked, keep getting in the way of the size I would desire to be. I probably got that also from my father. Grantley McLean read the newspaper literally from cover to cover. I believe that the nation newspaper should contribute to his funeral. Because when the Sunday sun came, I know that people would read from, some people want to see the sunshine girl. Bless their heart, no judgment. Some people want to see the comments. Some people want to see the sports. People like Patrick and brothers and those in the, we want to see the sports. What happened at the horse racing the day before? Not my father. My father would read the Sunday newspaper from the time I get up to the time to eat lunch. He was still reading. So I had to conclude one or two things. Either my father was a very slow reader or he wanted to read literally the ink off the page. Either which way, it took him four hours through the newspaper. Now I could see why as a social scientist researcher and scholarship, I love research. And I would talk about it, but don't ask me to write a research paper. I think my father had the same challenge. My father worked the early morning shift as a conductor for over two decades. And it's here I realize why, I, why it's important to be on time, Glennis. Mm-hmm. Because that morning bus that was whistle coming down from the top road wouldn't wait if my father not there. So he would always get there, but always seemingly slightly late just to get the bus. So now, Catherine, you understand why when we're leaving and going to places, I am almost, almost slightly late to get there. Blame my father. He can't reply. No, he did. My father was also an avid domino player. He studied the game. In fact, those of us who played with him would be frustrated when it's his turn because he would take so long to study before he would play a card. And if I knew what I knew now, I would have said to him back then, why study long to play, study long to play wrong? But it's all right. It may not be said today, as Abner declared when his father died, that the great has fallen Neither would it might be said today, as Jonathan would have said of Saul, that the mighty, the pleasant, and the lovely have fallen asleep. But what it will be said today is that Grantley McLean smiled at everyone that he met. He didn't need a reason to smile. And while some would conclude that if Monday came on Thursday, it wouldn't bother my father, and would think that that was a, a bad thing, I now discover that the key to life is living in the present. That you only raise your blood pressure when you want to control everything in life. So to all and sundry I say, I am learning to be cool like a cucumber like my father. If Thursday come on Friday this week, I'm just going to smile. In 2021, the last conversation face to face I had with my father, I said to him, I am 50 years old and you and I have never had a serious talk. Because when my father was working with the transport board company, he would leave early and then when I got older enough to have that talk, I was leaving very early to go to community college and we would always miss each other. And I said, let's have a talk. And I discovered about my father's childhood. I discovered about some of the things that drove him and the challenges he had in life. And I said to him, promise me just two things. I said to him, the past is the past. Whatever has happened, we all have life issues. If we're honest about it, today we have a chance to start fresh. I forgive you 
forgive yourself, but do these two things for me. One, take care of your health, and two, reconnect with God. And I want to just read from one of his works. And this was apparently a study that had happened, and he had this quotation, I believe, from Ellen White. It says, there is no limit to the youthfulness of the one who put in self aside, made room for the working of the Holy Spirit, and allowed themselves, their lives, to wholly be consecrated to God. And here are the points that he made regarding that. S set self aside. Two, make room for the Holy Spirit. Three, dedicate yourself to service. And then he has in capital letters these words that resonate so well with me. He says, when we do these things, they will limit doubt, fear, hatred, pride, malice, selfishness, covetousness, lack of knowledge, laziness, worldliness. And he said, the solution then to life is this. Total surrender, prayer, fasting, and Bible study. I believe right now my father has played his last domino. And I believe that the devil, who is the adversary of all of us, has blocked the game. And he looked at the whole life of Grant Lee Llewellyn McLean, and when the game was blocked, my father was left holding Big Bertha, double six, double five, and double four. And the devil says, well, I got him. There's no way you can have Big Bertha, Big Five, and Double Four and win this game. Fortunately, for those of us who love Jesus, also at that domino game was a man crossed Christ Jesus, who said because of his blood, all those Big Bertha, Big Five, and Big Four have been washed so clean, it became double blank, Blind S and double S. Devil, take that. God bless you. Thank you so much for being here. Marissa Waldron will now come and give us our second scripture reading, Revelation 21, 1 to 5. Revelation chapter 21, verse 1 to 5. And I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth were passed away, and there, were, and there was no more sea. And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle. The tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and God, and God himself shall be with them, and be their God. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow, nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. And he and he that sat upon the throne said, Behold, I made all things new. And he said unto me, Write, for these words are true and faithful. Here is the scripture reading. To share with us a uh, word from God today, we have... Pastor Leslie Padmore. And before he speaks to us, we will be blessed with another special item of music by Jason Mears.
our debts as we forgive our debtors. Just not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory for Deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom and the power. for ministering to us through that song. Can you bow your heads and pray with me? Father, today, as I stand to share words of encouragement and hope to this bereaved family, to this congregation, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. I just want to join with the others to express to the bereaved family today our deepest condolences to you. We cannot comfort, but God can. And he knows exactly how each family member feels. As the song says, he's there to comfort and to cheer just when we need him most. I want to share with you from a passage of scripture that is very familiar I guess many of have, many have read it and reread it, but I'll read it again. It is found in the book of St. John, chapter 3. And it reads thus, There was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, 
a ruler of the Jews. The same came to Jesus by night and said unto him, Rabbi, we know that thou art a teacher come from God. For no man can do these miracles that thou doest, except God be with him. Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus said unto him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. Marvel not that I said unto thee, ye must be born again. Nicodemus came to Jesus by night. I'm glad that he came. And you can come to Jesus by night or day. The important thing is that you come. He came by night. And there are a couple of things about this passage that amazes me. One is Jesus can read the thoughts and the intents of our hearts. He knows where you are at. He knows what you're thinking. He knows what your thought processes are. He knows. So as Nicodemus was in his preamble and, 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 and his flowery talk and introduction up front, Jesus said, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Every man, every human being comes to a point, a junction, a juncture, a place in his life's experience. When all the things that he clamors for, that he, he, he goes after, has no meaning. Vain, waste of time, useless. And he thinks in a very profound way, in a deeper sense. What would happen if I were to breathe my last breath? What will happen to me? Where would I go? Where would I spend eternity? Nicodemus was a ruler. He was prominent. But he recognized that at times he felt empty. There was something missing, some missing component in his life. All of the things that he had, all of the connections that he had made, all of the wealth that he had acquired, all the fame and notoriety, all of these things were insignificant. There was something missing. And I'm here to tell you today that in every one of us, there is something that is missing. And you cannot find that in things, acquiring things, going after things, whether it be pleasure or, or whatever. That void that Nicodemus had, that void that every one of us at times experience can only be filled by God. Jesus said to him, Nicodemus, what you really came to find out 
is this. You need a change of heart, a born again experience. Verily, verily, he said, I say unto thee, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. That has been God's position from time immemorial and it will be until he comes. You see, brothers and sisters, God desires the salvation of every one of us. He loves us. And he loves us to the extent that he is willing to show us that void, that emptiness that you have in your life, only he can fill. You must have that born again experience. And Jesus says, without it, you cannot see the kingdom of God. How many of us go after the things of the world, the pleasures of the world, but we miss out on that very important aspect? having that born-again experience. Jesus went on to say, Verily, verily I say unto thee, except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. Marvel not that I said unto thee, ye must be born again. I normally put it this way. That birth that you had either at the old general hospital because there's some people who can probably go back very far or when the midwife came to your mother or your grandmother or whoever and delivered you at home or when you went to the QEH or wherever you were born. That life that birth only guarantees you a certain number of years on this earth. That's why our brother Grantley is here today. That's why you will be like him one of these days. Because all that guarantees us is that we're going to live on earth for 20, 30, 40, 50, 60 or a hundred years and then we are going to die that first birth when your mother was in excruciating pain and giving birth to you but Jesus says there is another birth that you must have to make it into the kingdom of God and that is a born again experience and you experience that by being born of water and of the Spirit. But the Grantley had that experience many years ago. I saw that willingness in my encounters with a very peaceful, quiet man. And then that encounter, and he never denied, that gave me a smirk. He never denied that he needed to get back to God. He knew that. He didn't argue that. And whatever transpired between in his last moments, I'm glad that we have a God of mercy and God. He knows and he's touched with the feelings of our infirmities. And we place that last moment, those last moments between him and his God. 
my God, he says in his words, he does not delight in the death of a sinner. Jesus came all the way from heaven to ensure even in our weakness to help us to understand that he is there for us. Whatever may be arresting your attention away from Jesus, cares of this life, the things of this world, the pleasure of this world, Jesus says, look, I am here to help you to break that yoke that is holding you away from me and to get you back into that right relationship because God has enough room in heaven for us. Tell his disciples, look, I go to prepare a place for you. There's plenty of room. You know, I'm amazed how we expend monies and time. I have a friend who, whose daughter was born here some years ago. She's in the process now of, because uh, she has a Barbadian passport, has to get her passport renewed. And she has to wire money from where she is to me so that I can um, uh, make sure that that passport is valid. The, the amount of money the, that we pay to go to the U.S. Embassy to get a visa just to make sure that we can go and see Uncle Sam and we can experience life in America, airfare, hotel accommodation, food. And I don't know of any Bajan who travels and does not have shopping high on his or her list. You're carrying some us dollars as well to make sure that you don't bring it back here. But then, how many of us Make the effort. Jesus says, I prepared a place for you. You don't have to get no visa. No visa. You don't have to get any airfare. You don't need to take any luggage there. All you have to do is to be ready. And Jesus tells us what we need to do to be ready. You must be born again. That old disobedient spirit, that old disobedient own way, you must give way to a new you. That's why the word of God says, therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. All things are passed away. Oh, bless the Lord. I give God thanks for Jesus for always keeping his word. He says that death does not have the last word. One day death itself shall die. One day there'll be no more sickness, no more pain, no more suffering, no more shedding of tears because of the passing of a loved one. One day that will come to an end because Jesus says he will come again. I long for that day. I live for that day. I preach and help to help people to be ready for that day. And Jesus says when he comes again, those who have made a commitment, a surrender, those who have had that born again experience, bless the Lord, will be privileged to go up through Plain air. No Elon Musk, Richard Branson spacecraft. Plain air. You ain't got to pay no pa passage. The price has already been paid. He's going to take us up past the moon and the sun and the stars and all this atmosphere in the stratosphere he's going to take us right to that place that he has gone to prepare for us brothers and sisters the reality is that Jesus is coming soon 
over 2,000 years now, he left his disciples and said, I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again. My God always keeps his word. He keeps and fulfills every promise. And I want to ask you a question today. That will be a rhetorical one. But act on it, please. What preparations have you made? What preparations are you making for the coming of Jesus? What preparations have you made? I believe, brothers and sisters, that the best preparation that you can make is in giving your life to God. Because when Jesus comes again, that's all that matters. Nothing that you've acquired here will be of use in that new heaven and new earth. All the academia, all the education, all of the gifts or giftedness that you have, all of the wealth that you have, everything you're going to leave down here, the only thing you're going to take with you is a character. Oh, as I close, brothers and sisters, word of God says that eyes have not seen ears have not heard neither has it entered into the thoughts of man the things that God has prepared no more sickness there so many of my members in the last couple of years go to the doctor or to the hospital going around fairly good all the time and then it seems as though the various machines there can only detect things when they're at stage four nobody didn't see nothing when it was stage one and two and three it's four and they tell you okay you know go back home and make her Comfortable. Make him comfortable. Because that's it. That's a reality. But the good news is, brothers and sisters, there'd be no sickness in that place that Jesus has taken us. Oh, bless the Lord. The word of God says there'd be no sickness. There'd be no pain. No suffering. All these ailments, maladies that that you have to pay so much for here. You go to the doctor and it ain't not 25 or $30, it's thousands. Then you have to go for this test and the next test. Thank God. And then, that's it. But Jesus has assured us there's something to look forward to beyond death to those who mourn this evening i want to assure you that this death that we are experiencing now is not the last doesn't have the last word my jesus has and when he comes again hallelujah all those who have lived and died in christ whether you are in whatever cemetery across the world, I'm saying to you that when Jesus Christ comes again, the word of God says that the dead in Christ shall rise first. But are you living for him today? How many times over the last year that you have been talking about getting back to Jesus? How many times over the last year you've been talking about giving your young life or perhaps you're not so young now you, but you, you served the Lord once and you've disconnected from him and you, you, you've been thinking and the Spirit of God has been prompting you but you haven't gotten back yet. I'm saying there's no better time to think about your own mortality than now. Jesus is coming again and when he comes down just as he said he would oh bless the Lord what a wonderful time that will be my God 
the God that keeps his promises. He has gone to prepare that place. He told John and all the others, I go to prepare a place. And he is gone. Acts chapter 1, verses 9 to 11. As a matter of fact, while he was going up and Peter and the others were there and they saw gravity losing its hold and Jesus going up through the air on plain air, two angels stood by them and said, Ye men of Galilee, why stand ye there gazing up into heaven? This same Jesus that has gone up literally and visibly will one day come back visibly and literally in actual fact he will not be coming back in an invisible form he'll be coming back visibly you'll be able to see him with your own eyes and when he comes down through the clear blue skies the graves that contain all of God's children scattered and strewn across this earth wherever they are whether they be on land or sea whether they've been cremated and their ashes have been spread across the world my God is going to put them back together again and life eternal will begin I can't in my mortal mind I can't fathom it I can't understand it what it's going to be like but John said he saw it John said I saw a new heaven and a new earth for the first heaven and the first earth passed away John said that and John said look oh not only that but he says I saw that there be no more sickness no more pain no more death brethren that's what Jesus has gone to prepare for us and he has room for every one of us book your passage make it right with God as the song says get right with God get right with God and do it now Get right with God and he will show you how. Make that all-important decision. Because once you've breathed your last breath, there isn't anything that any pastor or any priest or any minister can do for you. Very soon, scenes like this will be forever banished. Or oh, what a day that will be when Jesus himself comes to set up his kingdom a kingdom that will never pass away. A kingdom where there will be no more sickness and pain and suffering and death. There will be no horror stories when you read the front page. Somebody got shot. Somebody got burg burglarized out their home or, or whatever. None of this. There will be no front stories that saying, you know, this place has been bombed and there's a war going on in this place. No. All of these things would have come to a halt. Peace. No more sickness. No more crime, no more violence, no more hunger, no more, you know, uh, these surging of up and down fluctuation of temperatures. You know, it's very cold and then very hot and, and no, my God will be there to modulate the temperatures and uh, we're going to be living in a perfect world. I want to be there. And I pray today that all those who grieve the loss of loved ones, perhaps yours is not this evening, perhaps yours might have been last month or last year or, or perhaps maybe sometime in the future, but you can live with that hope. Once you've made that commitment to Jesus, that one day, one day, this Jesus will come again. So I want to say to the bereaved family, you too have that hope. You're not strangers to the word of God. Keep that hope alive in your heart so that you, whatever peace that he made with Jesus, that's between him and Jesus. You can't do anything to change that, but there's everything you can do about you and make sure that you are saved when Jesus comes. What a day that will be. Looking forward to seeing all of you and if there's someone here today, somebody that has been planning and, and, and but you know, you've been hemming and hawing and procrastinating, you, you need to come back, but you, 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 I'm saying, do it now, today. If you want to speak to me, I want to do the other uh, pastors up here today about your relationship, about getting back to God and getting recommit, recommitted to God, or perhaps accepting him for the very first time. Do it today. 
book your passage. Let this day, the, is the eighth day, right? The eighth day of February. Let your name be recorded in the Lamb's Book of Life that today, just like Nicodemus, who asked that very important question, and Jesus told him what he had to do, that you too, having asked that question, that you too would do what Jesus says you ought to do so that when the roll is called up yonder, you can be there. May God help us all to be there, is my prayer in Jesus' name. Father, bless your word to our hearts today. And I pray, Father, that you will continue to be with the bereaved and everyone here, Lord, who has not yet made it right with you. May they do it today before it is too late. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Pond. <clears throat> Thank you, Pastor Padmore, for bringing to our attention that as good as today may be, tomorrow is better because of Calvary. Let us stand for the prayer of comfort. Let us stand, please. Let us pray. Oh God, our help in ages past, our hope for years to come, our shelter from the stormy blast, and our eternal home. Thank you, God, that you do not sleep nor slumber. You have promised that you will always be there for your children. Before we call, you hear, and you have an answer. You invite us to come to you, all who labor and are heavy laden. on the opening of the door you will enter and dine you have promised to all of us who are alive alive now that he who seeks will find to her who calls upon you you will answer thank you God for your patience thank you for your promises to comfort the broken hearted Thank you for your assurances that you are returning with a new earth before given sinners and death and sin and pain and separation will never be our experience again or the experience of your faithful people. Thank you, Jesus, for your love and your readiness to accept us and be your children in the new Jerusalem. Until then, we await the sound of the trumpet when the dead in Christ will rise and see your face, see you face to face. Father, all of us here this afternoon can do well with a little comfort and a hug from you. Do that now for us, we pray, and we ask that favor in the name of Jesus, our Lord and our Savior. Amen and amen. We may stand forward. Close again, please. To close, we are going to sing hymn number 440. How cheering is the Christian's hope? And the family has requested that during the singing of this song, an offering be collected to help the needy poor in the community.
pray. Father, today, we really long to reach that blissful home. All around us is suffering and sickness and decay and death. You have assured us and you always keep your promises. Keep us faithful, Lord. May we make our calling and election sure. Even as we leave to go to the place of interment, we ask that you would take us safely and that the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit would rest in the Bible with us now and forevermore. Amen. Out of respect for the family, we ask that as the organist plays, you remain standing in your position until the family escorts the body outside. Thank you very much for your cooperation. Thank you. 